you've been around here for a bit, you may have heard me say that herbs don't work if you don't take them. And I'm gonna make a little adjustment to that and say that herbs don't work if you don't take enough. Hey, my name is Kristen. Welcome back to Herbs and Ease. Today we are talking about herbal dosage and duration. How much of herbs do we actually need to take to get the benefits and how long? So this is episode five of our Herbalism 101 series where I am giving you the foundational skills and knowledge that you need to start to bring herbal medicine into your life as part of your wellness care. And we are covering herbal safety spectrum, herbal dosage and duration, and the factors that are going to determine dosage, as well as how to take herbs for chronic and acute ailments. And even we're going to touch on how to give herbs to kids. So in determining how to dose out herbs, we can think of herbs, first of all, as being on a spectrum of herbal tonics, to herbal toxics. So tonic herbs are herbs that are going to provide long-term support for the body by nourishing and toning organs and systems. These are herbs that are generally considered safe, especially for regular long-term use, and they're often going to be used to promote overall health and well-being. These are herbs like chamomile and nettle and ginger, herbs like red raspberry and burdock and dandelion. Most of the herbs that I talk about on this show are going to fall into that tonic realm. Typically, these herbs are going to be well tolerated by most people. They can be used in teas and tinctures and other forms without significant risks or adverse effects. However, it is still really important to be aware of any potential interactions with medications or medical conditions and to start with smaller doses and gradually increase as needed. Now that's tonic herbs. On the other side of that spectrum, we have toxic herbs. And toxic herbs are going to be herbs that are toxic. They have a potential to be pretty harmful if used improperly or if used in excessive amounts. And some of these herbs can even cause death. So you need to be really, really careful with these herbs. I pretty much never talk about them. I don't work with them in my practice. I don't feel qualified to use them. And so if you are going to work with these herbs, you really want to work with a very qualified clinical herbalist or even health practitioner. And these are going to be herbs like rue, pennyroyal, poke, and foxglove, belladonna. They can be really helpful and valuable herbs, but they're just not super safe. So you need to use extreme caution when you work with them. Now, in between tonic and toxic herbs, we have what I like to call direct aid herbs. And these are herbs that are going to be used for more specific purposes, like addressing acute symptoms or supporting the body during a particular phase of healings. And that might include echinacea or yarrow, barberry, aloe vera, white willow bark, rhodiola, just herbs that aren't like unsafe, but they're not tonic herbs that we'd want to use really consistently over a long period of time. These herbs can be very effective and they're generally pretty safe, but they are typically not intended for everyone, not every single person is going to benefit the same way from these herbs. And they probably should be used with caution and not really in long-term formats. It's important though to follow recommended dosages and duration of use. And these are herbs that can often cause our main interactions and have contraindications, especially with different health ailments and medications. So we have our tonic herbs, we have our toxic herbs, and we have our direct aid herbs. And determining the dosage and duration of whatever herb that we're working with is going to depend on a few variables. And a lot of these variables are like mess around and find out variables. Herbs are not as potent and they aren't as specific as pharmaceuticals. They work in much more systemic ways and how much herb we want to be taking is going to depend on a lot of different variables. So children and adults and teens and more golden individuals, they probably require different dosages due to different variations in metabolism. Dosages are often going to be adjusted based on body size, Larger individuals may require higher dosages, while smaller individuals may require lower dosages. Individuals with pre-existing health conditions like liver or kidney or heart disease may require lower dosages or they may need to avoid certain herbs altogether. You also want to consider the severity of the ailment being treated. Chronic conditions or general wellness 
may require lower dosages that are used over a longer period of time, while acute conditions may require higher dosages for immediate relief. Now, some individuals may be more sensitive to herbs. They might have allergies to certain herbs. Their dosages are going to have to be adjusted accordingly. So as you can see, there are just a lot of factors that are going to determine how much of an herb someone should take and when determining the dosage of herbal medicine to ensure safe and effective use. But there are some general guidelines that you can follow and then use some of those variables to adjust your dosage based on those guidelines. And of course, this is all going to come down to what are you using the herb for? Are you using the herb for a chronic condition or improving your general wellness? Or are you using the herb for an acute ailment? So chronic diseases are defined broadly as conditions that last one year or more and require ongoing attention or limit activities of daily living or influence the quality of life. Chronic conditions usually develop slowly and they may worsen over an extended period of time, like months to years. And when treating chronic conditions or just supporting general wellness, it's best to have about four cups of a nutritive daily tea per day. If you aren't sure what I mean by that, you want to check out the episode on tonic herbs. It's going to cover nourishing herbal remedies that will make up the foundation of Western herbal practices. They're a great place to start with making herbal interventions because they cover a pretty wide variety of ailments and systems of the body, and they provide usually a lot of vitamins and minerals and general nourishment to the body. You can also check out the first episode of the Herbalism 101 one series on making herbal tea, just to get an idea of how to make herbal infusions so that your teas are actually effective. And a standard practice for general wellness or chronic issues is to actually just brew your daily tea either the night before or in the morning and sip on it throughout the day. A lot of herbalists will just carry around a mason jar. And yes, you can add a little bit of honey or a little bit of milk into your tea like I do sometimes, or you can just drink it plain. If you don't want to carry your tea around or make multiple cups of tea throughout the day, you can just work with a tincture. That can be really effective and really beneficial as well. At times, it is simply easier to just work with a tincture. These can be left on your desk at work or on your side table. I keep them in my basket and my purse. Whenever I go anywhere, they're very easy to travel with and you can just take them as needed throughout the day. But a general guideline for when we're working with our chronic ailment or supporting your daily wellness is about two to three doses of tincture per day. I usually opt for one in the morning and one at night. It's just the easiest for me to remember unless I'm working with something like anxiety or mental health issues or chronic pain. And then I might take an herb as needed as my body feels like it would benefit. Now, a standard tincture dosage is going to be around one to three dropper folds, depending on the strength of the medicine. And again, all of those variables that we discussed earlier, obviously it's a pretty wide range uh, you can do more or less depending on some of the variables and your specific needs. And of course, because the herbs that you are taking for general wellness or chronic ailments are going to be closer to the tonic side of the safety spectrum, they can be taken over a long term and are really safe. At some point, determining how much of an herb you should be taking is kind of like asking how much broccoli or salad would I eat in one sitting? It is going to depend on the individual. So feel free to play around with your dose, take as much or as little as you need, to feel good and to be feeling the effects. Now, another question that I often get is how long should I be working with this herb? And a general guideline that I heard once is use the herb for one to two months per year that you have been struggling with a particular health ailment. So that means if you have been struggling with an ailment for about five to six years, you probably want to be on the herbs that really help the ailment for about five, six, to up to 12 months and maybe beyond. So it takes a while for the body to heal, not just to heal, but also to have a new normal. It takes time for the body to trust that the patterns have been altered and to behave as if it's 
not just going to go back into its old patterns, if that makes any sense. Um, if you want to know more, I can share about how I used herbs and lifestyle factors to put my Hashimoto's into relative remission so that I don't struggle with it anymore. So just leave a note in the comments if you want to learn a little bit more about how long it actually takes to heal with herbs. I'd love to talk more about it. So that's all for caring for our general wellness and for chronic conditions. If you are using herbs to manage an acute ailment, like some sort of infection, a sprained ankle, a, a bout of stress or a bout of insomnia, then the dosages are going to be a little bit different. And this is usually where people go wrong. So an acute illness generally develops suddenly and it lasts a short time, often only a few days or weeks. So for an acute ailment, such as an active infection, the best way to use herbal remedies is to dose up every one to two hours. Basically, flood your system with those herbs. Herbs can do really phenomenal things in the case of symptom management and bacterial and viral infections, but they need to be taken in high doses and they need to be taken frequently. Remember, herbs are not as strong or as specific as prescription medications. They are not going to work the same. It is not a one and done situation. The number one thing that I hear when herbs don't seem to work for people is that during an infection, a client only took the herb once and that is likely to do absolutely nothing. Herbs need to be taken consistently throughout the day to manage an acute illness. Now, there may be some variation on an herb depending on what you're working with, but a general guideline is that it is best to work with a plant medicine having a half a cup to a cup or one to two dropperfuls of a tincture every two to three hours until the ailments or the symptoms subside. That is a lot more than what most people think they need to be taking. If you are sick, if you are dealing with an acute illness, flood your body with those herbs. So to recap, when treating a chronic illness or supporting your general wellness, for most healthy adults, we're thinking four cups of herbal tea per day and one to three dropperfuls of an herbal tincture two to three times a day. But when treating an acute illness, an active infection, an active symptoms, or an active flare-up, we want about one half to one cup of herbal tea or one to three dropperfuls every two to three hours or until the infection clears or symptoms subside. Now I'm curious, if you have used herbs before and they just didn't work, do you think that the dosage and duration was the issue? Are you learning something from this video that you didn't know before that is going to make your future herbal practice a little bit more effective, let me know in the comments. I'm always interested in hearing where everyone is at. Now I get asked a lot, what about herbs for children? When you give herbs to kids, just like adults, they respond really well. It can be very safe and very effective to give herbs to kids, but because they are smaller, the dosages are also going to be smaller. Of course, all of that is largely going to depend on many of the same factors that influence giving herbs to an adult, including context and age and body size. Now, these charts are courtesy of Rosemary Gladstar from her book, Rosemary Gladstar's Medicinal Herb, a beginner's guide. Feel free to take a screenshot or I will send you the graphics on TikTok or on Instagram. Just follow me, send me a DM saying child dosage and I will get it right to you. And you can also buy the book. And I highly recommend that because it is very concise. It's well-written. It's probably one of my favorite beginner herbalism books that I suggest to new students all the time. And as you can see from this chart, when giving herbs to kids, you just significantly decrease the dose. And that might even make it a little bit more comfortable if you're thinking about giving children tinctures that are made with alcohol, because the alcohol content is going to be so low. It's not going to intoxicate children. They're barely even going to notice it unless they're allergic to alcohol. But if you are concerned about giving alcohol to children, you can just have a separate vinegar or glycerin extract. Just remember that Vinegar and glycerin extracts do not often have the same chemical compounds in them as alcohol extracts would, and sometimes that means that they're not actually getting the medicine that you really want them to be getting. Ultimately though, giving herbs to children and how you do it is going to depend on how 
you as the parent feels about it. It can really help though to have a relationship with the different herbs that you're thinking of bringing into your life and into your family, especially if you're a little bit concerned about giving those herbs to your kids. Most often though, for those really safe tonic herbs. Children can get a ton of benefit out of medicinal relationships with plants for health and well-being, especially when it comes to things like recovering from chronic ailments and the cooties. Animals can also receive herbal medicine. It can be really effective. I actually give my dog and cat herbs every single day. They get a ton of herbs. They do super well with them. If you want to know how I give my animals herbs and what herbs I'm giving them and what are some of my favorite herbal remedies for animals and how I use them, just leave a note in the comments and we'll talk a little bit about that. But if you also want to know more, you should absolutely check out this great book called The Encyclopedia of Natural Pet Care. It has a ton of great information. It's what I use most often to understand how to give my pets herbs. So it's a really great resource. Now, if you really want to feel confident about how you are bringing plant medicine into your life to know that you're doing it right, make sure that you like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on the next episode in our Herbalism 101 series. It's going to be all about herbal safety and making sure that we're making good herbal choices with how we bring plant medicine into our wellness routine and what we have to watch out for in terms of safety. And until then, get out there, put some herbs into your body, because it's good for you. Remember, they don't work if you don't take them. So go take your herbs. Okay, that's it for me. And yeah, I love you. Bye.